come to order. And it's being recorded under RCTV. Um, and you can see it on Verizon 33, Comcast 22, or www.rctv.org. And the first item on the agenda is an Eagle Scout project, boardwalk project. Uh, John Goodwin. Mr. Goodwin, would you like to present your project, please? Yes, thank you. Uh, so my name is John Godwin. I'm, oops, sorry. That's fine. I'm currently 17 years old. I'm in Troop 728, uh, based out of St. Agnes. And uh, my project is to replace a section of boardwalk in Town Forest. And that section is on the Cranberry Dam Trail. Uh, Right here, so in this section right here, just started. where there's already existing boardwalk, is to replace and improve the boardwalk that's already there. So, so the project overview. So it's a 30-foot section that we're gonna that we're gonna replace, and the old sections will be disposed of. I'm working with the DPW on actually like the final step of disposing them. We're gonna move them to the road, and they're gonna take care of that. I've contacted the DPW already. And um, we're following the standard design plan that was, give, that was given to me by the Trails Committee. And that's what they want the new sections of Boardwalk to look like. So we'll be following that. Um, the goal is to start and finish the project in November. So. You know, if you just put that stuff on the side of the road and put a sign on it that says free, <laughs> it'll all disappear. disappear. <laughs> yeah. uh, so the description of the new design. So the idea is to use Trex, which is like a, like a plastic wood looking thing instead of like using actual wood so it doesn't rot away. So tracks will be what we use for the walking surface and pressure treated wood will be used for support structures and um, infrastructure and the uh, support structures are every 10 or so feet on the boardwalk. Uh, so considerations to minimizing impact on the environment. So the treks, um, the, the, the material that we're going to be using isn't wood so it won't just, it won't just disappear like we if we decide to make any to install anything near the counter or anything like that any like the dust the sawdust won't just go away so we have to do any cutting or screwing into anything with the tracks we have to do that somewhere else where it can be disposed of and collected because it'll just stay there because it's plastic so we have to think about that um, also during the actual installation of the boardwalk we will put two by tens on the actual wetlands floor so people don't sink as much into the, the, uh, the ground there. Uh, we also perform all the work in the fall after the growing season so we'll have less of an impact on any plant life or anything that's going on. And we'll try to trim back overgrowth only as much as we need so try to minimize the impact that we have. Is that it? Safety concerns? Yeah, just some safety considerations. So obviously we're going to post notes on the trailheads and block off the areas of boardwalk while uh, they're under construction so people don't get confused and uh, go there. So, yeah, that is it. That's it. How long do you ex expect this um, construction to take? How long? We don't know. We're just in the, in the process of getting it approved. We got approved by the Town Forest Committee. We are seeking approval here. We have to also get approval by the Trails Committee. Their meeting is in September. So after that, we'll actually start to figure out how long it'll take and the price and the amount of materials and whatnot. So. I was wondering, uh, I was wondering, uh, how did you come up with uh, 30 feet? Is it uh, the 30 feet that's needed? So we, we talked, me and my scoutmasters, and there's several projects that can be done within the 130 foot section of boardwalk that needs to be replaced. Mm -hmm. So we, we came to the number 30 as a good number so other scouts could uh, have Eagle Scout projects. I, I think this is kind of in line with that, but I, you know, I need to see the boardwalk. But so is, is the existing boardwalk, I, it, is it in poor condition? So what, why this 130 foot section um, it, it, to focus on? rather than some other area. Is there a reason you guys have decided to focus on this area? Well, the wood is rotting. I mean, it's been there for a while. And just the whole idea of it, it's just like the boardwalks just sitting on cinder blocks. And like over time, those like have shifted and it's uneven and it's it's just, it's not aesthetically pleasing and it's not, it's, it's falling apart. So it does need replacing. It doesn't have the track boards on it. It has pressure treated. Yeah, so the, those, there's some sections that have already been replaced, and they're using like the Trex design with the pressure treated wood. But the old sections are just like 
just regular wood, so they're, they, they're falling apart. Any questions? Any questions, Tom? That's a great project. Good luck with it. Yeah. Thank you. Is this in keeping with the, when we talked about the width? About They're using the design from uh, the trails okay. committee. Okay. So it'll be the same, it should be the same width as that everything. Yeah, they gave us design, they gave us the, the diagrams for everything, so we'll good. be following that. Oh, good luck. All right. Um, Feel free. I hear a motion to make a motion to approve the project. Second. All those in favor? Great. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Appreciate it. So, Chuck, it's not quite. Uh, oh, the next item on the agenda is the notice of intent 270-0714, 135, 139, and 149 are Howard Street, Map 10, Lot 75, 76, and 77 Infrastructure Holdings LLC, and I think they've asked to uh, continue. Yes, they uh, sent me an email late this afternoon asking to continue to they actually just said that they will be ready to come in with a new design very soon and so I have the ability to push it off for one meeting and which I did September 11th is when it's back on the agenda okay um, we can go to all new business do we have something to quickly sign uh, yeah you could uh, see Steve uh, audience there. Yeah. You can oh, see, okay. you can sign this project lane. here. ORAD 278-0721, 18 small lane, map 40 and 41, lot 153, 155, and 29K, CJ Delray. So I talked to Maureen this afternoon, and I didn't have a plan for this, but she provided a memo that outlined the changes we made, and they re they're reflected in this, uh, this ORAD. So I recommend that you sign it. We'll go first and find. Do we need a motion to? Yep, you need it in all. Make a motion to issue. Second. All those in favor? Um, what about um, the other one? Could be 270 220. Uh, 259, 267 Main Street, Map 12, Lot 39 and 40, Finnegan Realty LLC. You want to do Finnegan? Yep. Uh, David Caldwell uh, also updated his plan. And this uh, ORAD rec uh, reflects the changes that we made on site. So, you don't remember the changes? David Cowell? Cowell. Cowell? Cowell. You had me there. Who? <laughs> <laughs> changed his name. <laughs> um, Maybe he's not looking for the picture. So it, uh, the flags are 100 through 134, and we moved one flag. He didn't add a flag, he just moved it up, and that's what he's saying in his memo. And then he has the bank along that brook that's on Cross Street, and that's flag, um, that's flagged 100 through 117 uh, BA. So BA flags 100 to 117. So anyways, they're both in here, and you should sign this also. I recommend to make a motion to uh, sign uh, yeah. all red 270-0722. Second. All those in favor? Did you make a motion to issue? Was that a motion to sign? We make a motion to issue as well. Okay. All right, 270-0722. Second. All those in favor? Let's get the last one out of the way. We can just take a minute. Um, 
do that. It's 220 Charles Street. It's uh, a request for determination of applicability. And I wrote up the determination. The only thing that we added to a very standard project where they're going to remove the roof and build vertically uh, to make it into a two-story house is that there were two deposits of yard waste in the yard. I identified them in um, the document section and asked for them to be removed. The owner has already contacted me. Uh, just trying to figure out timing of how that will happen. So I have no doubt that those will be removed before this project's over. I recommend that we issue and close and issue this uh, determination of applicability uh, to 2019-11. Uh, make a motion to uh, um, sign an issue, or, or, uh, issue a negative determination of RDA 219-11-220 Child Street uh, with caveats for removing yard waste. I also make a motion to close. Second. I right hear a second for the first item. Second. All those in favor? Do I hear a second for the second that Anika said? Second? Second. All those in favor? Okay. We already have an election last meeting. Yeah. So I didn't need to do that again. <laughs> Just, you know. Cover your bases. It doesn't matter. A little yeah. redundancies, okay. Put some suspenders yeah. with that bill. Um, <laughs> do you want to talk about, you got about three minutes, Chuck, do you want to talk about um, um, 128 Fairchild construction activity? Well, I don't know if we, yeah, so um, I don't I don't think there's enough time to, to okay. set that up, right. but um, Minutes? Yeah, you could do the minutes. All right, let's do minutes. Thanks, Bob. Mm -hmm. Did everybody uh, have an opportunity to look at the last many minutes? Mm -hmm. Did anybody have any comments? Mm -hmm. I did. <laughs> um, on page four, notice of intent 270-0717 Main 107 Main Street, Map 8. Lots one, Palmer. First paragraph. Two sentences up. Insert. It was discussed that the planting should take place no later than 12 months from the issuance of the order of conditions. We discussed that at the meeting. Mm -hmm. So if that goes into the meeting minutes, it's part of the, the record, correct? Yeah. So, you're, so you're inserting um, it, it didn't the, the planting plan. So the consultant said that he would um, agree to having the planting plan planted, I guess, um, within 12 months of the signing of the order of conditions, which happened on the uh, 14th, August 14th. So that needs to be in the minutes. I'll get this back to you. Jeff Grimm is the consultant's name. Right, you got that right. Well, I'm just doing that for the minutes. Okay. So that's that's what you're proposing to make sure we Right. Do you want to agree to put that in? What? We have to uh, vote to agree to put that in the minutes. And make a vote to approve the minutes as amended? I think we do. I mean, it, uh, we discussed it. I'll second. We did discuss it, yeah. So the motion to approve and insert the, that sentence. Motion's been made and seconded. That does a favor. <laughs> All right. We have two new members on the, the commission tonight. <laughs> right along. You know what? <laughs> May not recognize. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that name tag there. Yeah, I know. The name tag's familiar. It's a familiar name. <laughs> Speaking of the witness protection program. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, 720. 720, great. Okay, the next item on the agenda is Notice of Intent 278-0723-101 Willow Street, Map 2625, Lot 754543, Austin Preparatory School. Good evening, everybody. My name is Chris Huntress with Huntress Forge for the Project Landscape Architect. That would be some of you, but not everybody. Um, with me is Tyler Farrick with Rose Associates. Um, Later in the lane, John Weber, uh, JP, and uh, Jim Hickey with, uh, with Austin Prep. Um, I'll go over just briefly some of the changes and the plans that were submitted and then let Tyler uh, explain any, any details on the replication uh, issues. Uh, we go to uh, L1. Okay. Uh, well, hard to see in here necessarily, but some of the things that we've changed, we added uh, a foot rail fence that defines the 25 foot buffer uh, along in here, which is presently, I would say 20 to 25 feet out into the athletic field now, so this area. Well, the planting plan receives a seed mix and um, additional MLI gear along this edge, but this um, will be allowed to revegetate back out to the 25 foot buffer. It will be defined by a split rail fence. Uh, other minor changes that were made to the plan include uh, redelineation, delineation, but, but correctly identifying the 25 foot, 35 foot, and 100 foot buffer zones before we had the 25, 50, and, and 100, so then we chose the correct zone. And that carries through uh, all the plan sets. Uh, otherwise, the plans themselves uh, have stayed reasonably unchanged. Chuck, if I can get you to go to L8, which is one of the detail sheets. detail on the split rail fence and we added a note here uh, there was a request to put a wire backing on that chain on that um, sorry on the, on the split rail fence um, prohibit balls and and uh, other debris from migrating in to the wetlands or replication area or into the, the buffer zone so there was a note added to that there will be a, a wire mesh added it'll be black uh, coated uh, PVC but it'll be steel gauge and it'll be towed into the uh, the top six inches and then stapled to the back side of the, of the fence. We've done this before uh, pretty successfully. It really kind of fades into the background and you don't really see it, but you get the, the look of the split rail out front and the vegetation, you know, you get the barrier that you wanted with the, the wire back. So that's been added to the plan. And then finally, Chuck, if you could go to E1, which is the uh, planting plan. Planting plan, we added uh, a series of ammo like here uh, throughout this uh, area here uh, to further enhance the, um, uh, the replication uh, within the entirety of the site and we show the split rail fence here as well. Uh, I think with, with very few maybe minor exceptions Chuck those are probably the highlights of the changes that we made since, since the last meeting. There were some minor changes in notation made to the replication plan, which I'll ask. That's right. We have some questions just, about yeah. that. So, okay. Is this a good plan for the replication? Is there on the um, on? You know, it's on, it's on the drive. Plan. I have that one on the drive. If you go back out of this green mark here, you go to the conservation file. Here. Conservation commission. Uh, revised replication plan right at the bottom. That's the most recent. Yeah. Um, so, just to give kind of a brief summary, um, replication area, we w went back out and did a tree inventory. Um, so, there's three trees um, that would have to be removed um, for the excavation to bring the replication area down to grade. Um, and so, those would be replaced with red maples. Um, the two existing ones were two red maples and one paper birch. Um, and then also we'd be um, installing uh, so that are also existing in the wetland adjacent to it. Um, just to kind of give a quick summary of that, how the excavation process will go. Um, the replication area will be excavated down a foot below. Um, 
the existing wetland um, elevation and then our wetland soil mix will be brought in and so the finished elevation will match the adjacent wetland that exists on site. Okay. So what if you run into a uh, like an uh, obstacle that's just beyond where you're working, would you remove that too? Like a root or a tree that fell over then started growing so it's, it's kind of like along the ground. What, what would happen in that case, which seems to be a blockage to allowing some flow? Um, I didn't notice any in here. For the most part, a lot of this area is currently mowed, mm -hmm. um, kind of like bush. So on the other side, between the replication and the and the wetland. So, I mean, if there were any true true roots, there weren't any uh, yeah. big canopy trees close. Um, but of course, they go 15, 20 feet. But if a root is um, dug up, we would do a flush cut so they could re-sprout. Okay. Um, but there shouldn't be any that would be impacted. The main three were the ones that were marked that would be proposed to be replaced. Chuck, if it's helpful, I think the first thing we would do is call you. Take, uh, <laughs> take a look at it uh, so that we do it together, so that we all know what, what we're doing down there. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd really like to have that come in uh, as we all hope and see it on the plan there. Just you never know what's out in the field. And, and again, that would be great if I could get called and uh, come down and look. Becky, did you have a question about the seed mix and whether it had fern or no, uh, no. Things. Um, when we get to an order of conditions, mm -hmm. we get approval on, as, a, as a commission, there were some things I wanted to add because we talked about the seed mix and we said I including sensitive fern on Oclea sensibilis. So that would be reflected in the um, order conditions. And then we had talked about um, arrowwood and silky dogwood. And I do see it on the replication plan that we got tonight. So yeah, you you addressed that. See all three so, of those on this. Yeah. Yeah. So just put it in the. I just like to memorialize it in the order conditions. Okay. That's all. But but it is what. And then you've also got the three maple trees that you're putting in there too. So you meet our uh, tree replacement policy. Okay. Any other questions on the replication? What about uh, the causeway protection? I know that's something that. Are you familiar with this stuff? Want me to talk a little bit about Sure. That? Yeah. So this is a, um, can you scroll down just a little bit more so you can see the end You're down some This is a, a heavy duty construction, that's a better shot right there. Heavy duty construction matting um, that's made just for this purpose. And it, uh, it's thick enough that you can actually put it over wet areas and drive machinery across it. And if they link together, they kind of fall all together. And then you can drive heavy equipment really across a very boggy area. That's not what we're doing here. We're going across a gravel road. But we use these mats quite a bit to cross running tracks when we're doing work inside a running track on an athletic field. We have to get heavy equipment across. So these protect the surfaces below from any deviation. They disperse the weight. Uh, very nice job. I think our primary concern would be the 15 inch pipe that we're going over. But our longer concern would be rutting up that roadway with some, uh, enough traffic going back and forth across. So what we're proposing is, is a uh, is a complete matting of that causeway roadway with this product and then a, a row of uh, mulch stocks uh, staked in place on either side to contain anything that happens during say a storm event or otherwise but that would be what we would do to protect that roadway and i think that would do a good job i can show that it looks tomorrow what it looks like today do you have any sort of i'm sorry the bowl fall over there and stop no, that's the brochure. Oh, okay. Do you need to have any sort of minimum cover on the culvert uh, to put the mat, you know, 12 inches or? To go over that culvert? No. No, if I had to, I could put a steel plate under the mat if I felt like we weren't going to protect it, but these mats will, mats will protect it in and of itself. I, I, don't really, I don't quite remember, but can you see the like kind of the top of it. Do you know how far, how deep the culvert is? Right? Not deep, yeah. I've never seen it in the roadway. Two I've inches. seen it. Two inches, right? Okay. Yeah. And I did ask Ryan the same question. He thought it's pretty solid. Okay. Mm -hmm. These mats on top of it. Um, Generally, you don't, you still don't want them hitting the rigid point mm -hmm. um, because the weight will just go right into that spot. Uh, you want it to be able to. It, it does have the ability to spread, but you want it to have the ability. Oh, to, to spread. Put some three-quarter inch stone. 
feather it up and back down over that and then put the mat on top of that. And, and that would be my recommendation. No, if, 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 there's very, if there's less than a foot of cover, I think you want to make sure that you get something right at that point, and that'll help spread it out. So. Any other questions about the matting system? So do you show on a diagram roughly where you expect to put the matting system? Uh, I haven't, but I'd be happy to point it out if you want to go to uh, L1. I just want to get a sense of that. L1 at the top? Any, any one of those. That'll work. Um, stop right there. So this is the site preparation plan. Um, we're effectively going to start it right over here. But the, the asphalt, as you come down this drive, the end asphalt to about this location. So it's really going to be from the edge of asphalt on this side all the way across until we hit the tire scrubbers on this side. Um, so what you'll see out there, this is the site prep plan that shows the limits of, of work. This rectangle here is a, is a tire scrubber um, uh, area, if you will. And there's a detail for that on the plan. And then the mats will go right into that and all the way out to the asphalt. Again, Rosa Mulch on, on either side. A uh, question I think I saw in draft of the order that it lists it's going to take six months to construct. I thought you guys said it was going to be about three. It's typically three to four um, that it would take. Yeah. We, we wouldn't build this over the winter if we got right. started this fall. We work until weather prohibited construction, and we would stop. Yep. So we would start again in the spring one time allowed, weather allowed. Dave, did you um, are you okay with gray? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And there was a question about the crumb rubber, and I, I think the I, I put in the order that it would be vacuumed up. I think the school said that they would, you know, address that issue with. I don't know what what they what you guys came up with, but maybe vacuums, <laughs> but somehow to monitor it when it gets onto the path, it goes around the field, and make sure it, it gets back into the field because I guess it can travel out. two ways. What's that? A lot of times it's swept up. Yeah. You swept? Yeah. We want to sweep it. Yeah. We, 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 could, we, we do it in a number of ways. Like you said, we use a power grown no. uh, rotary sweeper. Those, those all work. Um, we have blowers on occasion. The, um, what I can tell you, though, about the walkway, particularly the walkway along the edge, um, where the replication area is, which is just on the bottom of the field there, where I think we'd probably be most concerned, that walkway actually pitches on the grading plant back into the, into the field itself. So if water hits this walkway, it's going, that, it's going into the field and then into the drainage system. And there's a low point across the field here, so I don't expect in, in a standard storm system, a uh, storm event, for anything to come out and migrate this way across. And there's a six foot chain link fence here that would keep people from coming this way across that area as well. But having said that, we close power pumps, a number of different things we can do to sweep that should any dispersed rubber um, or infill material get out there. Um. I just, I'm looking at the matting system, and the dimensions of the matting system are eight foot long by 14 feet wide. Um, so is eight feet, I guess I'm, I'm well, We thinking. would make them eight feet wide and 14 feet long. And okay. Across, and that would cover the, the tire tracks. Of because I'm just doing a rough scale off the document, a large drawing. Um, and it looks like there's going to be overhang off the path. Eight, of with the, eight feet? Not with a. No, it's with a width of with a width of fourteen. So yeah, I mean, go vehicles go. fine go. with eight feet width. Yeah. Okay. We're going to go eight feet. Yeah. Okay. Just asking. It's a good catch. Good question. Any other comments from the commission? No, and I just wanted Chris to, to uh, which I thought was a great point when he answered my questions, I asked him, you know, why uh, the pathway around the field wasn't pervious. And he said that the, there was a cost-effective cost of, uh, 
the product was was too much, but he also said that the ADA wouldn't allow certain products. Could you go over that? Yeah, so if we used, um, Chuck had asked us to review various options for, the, for something other than asphalt, particularly as it relates to that, I believe Chuck, you meant that walkway as it kind of swings around the bottom of the field there. Um, that is the main path to get folks in and around to the site. Um, Mass AAB and ADA requirements no longer allow for a wood chip path or a stone dust path or a piece stone path because although you can stabilize them and you can maintain them, most people don't. So although they used to allow you to use those surfaces, they've now stopped allowing that because the reality is people didn't maintain them and they would rut and then wheelchairs couldn't get across them. So, um, so the soft surfaces, in my opinion, were out. Some of the harder surfaces being pervious pavement or, or pavers cost prohibitive uh, item for the school. Do you happen to know, is that something fairly recent? Yeah, it's within the last year. I was going to say because our path of from Matera to the viewing station is was done ADA compliant on purpose and that's all crushed. We were on another project we were just proposing a stabilized wood chip path which is a product that's actually spray applied to hold the wood chips together mm -hmm. and uh, they wouldn't even allow that. What's the life expectancy of a previous product? Of a what? Previous product? Asphalt? Like water, whatever it is. I mean, oh, imper oh, pervious? Pervious. Something that a lot of penetration of water through it eventually gets contaminated, filled up with stuff. Is there any. You're talking about pervious pavement? Um, the life expectancy depends on what you're doing with it. If you're driving over it in a parking lot, particularly in New England, a lot of salts and sands are going to get in and clog it. All it really is is popcorn asphalt. Sure. It's got larger voids through it, water to go. But it's not, previous pavement isn't just the top three inches. You don't just change the asphalt mix. There's about a two foot cross section profile with drainage below that to be able to get the, the water in. The reality is on this system, if what we're trying to do is infiltrate the water into the, into the ground, it's happening on this design because we cross pitch the walkway to the turf and the turf has that 12 inch crushed stone drainage system that encourages infiltration below. So I believe you're getting the, the effectiveness, getting that sidewalk to infiltrate without the expense of previous pavement. And I was referring to a project of this nature where people would just be walking on it five years, 10 years, 20 years. They're still in the um, Depends, it just depends on how much debris gets in it. From what? Sure. Yeah. The asphalt will last longer, it just would no way it would no longer drain vertically. All right. So are there any questions about the this Did we cover everything? We covered everything, but I wanted Chris Latham to update everybody on the memo of understanding and then finally to go over the, the proposed changes that Chris and his team put together for the order of conditions. So I just was wondering if we were finished with this. I have one thing for the table. Is that sick? Yeah. Okay. If I can approach the board, I just want to submit for the board's reference um, two documents. One of, one of which is um, a memorandum of understanding that was um, through working with the town last night, the board of select and uh, the select board actually voted uh, last night in favor of this and uh, it was signed up between the town and um, the school. And what the memorandum of understanding does is it it recognizes that the town has concerns relative to the health uh, and conservation of the Aberjona. And it also acknowledges, you, you got it? Okay, you want me to have a hard copy? Uh, no, I'll take the cover one now. Okay. This isn't a, this is actually the uh, different letter from the town engineer. Yeah, okay, you get right. that. Yeah. Thank you. And so uh, basically what it does is it, it acknowledges, um, well, it, it basically, uh, agrees to cooperate. Austin Prep is agreeing to cooperate with the town. They're basically uh, willing to contribute up to $75,000 in value in terms of um, materials and potential labor costs um, for the town um, relative to the replacement of the culvert in the existing um, causeway. All right, and it also has a mechanism uh, whereby the school is going to be granting access to the town uh, so that they can do uh, culvert work, but they can also 
uh, do potential dredging if they think that's appropriate. Um, so we believe that it, it basically is a significant benefit to the town um, and, and mitigates uh, what we're trying to do relative to uh, the lower field project. Um, but just also to reiterate, we believe that the project in general is actually going to improve the flow of the Abrajona. Uh, we believe that it's going to improve the water quality uh, via the recharge and protection of the town wells. Um, we believe that it's going to provide greater flood control, which is basically acknowledged in the August 1st memo from the town engineer. Basically acknowledges the fact that um, the drainage design is more than adequate to handle the 25-year storm. And it also says that there's a notation that it reduces the 100-year flood. And this is, this, that memo was written for the board's reference prior to the memorandum with, of understanding with the town. So it would be interesting. I think, I think, I don't want to speak for Ryan, but I would think that he would view that as something even more beneficial um, than when he actually wrote that August 1st memo. Um, we believe that the recharge is also going to uh, reduce pollution. And as I stated in a prior meeting, we believe that these are all consistent with the town's open space and recreation plan of 2012. We believe that it promotes um, public benefits of education uh, for a nonprofit organization, and it's consistent with the town's master plan of 2005. So um, for those reasons, we believe that there's many more wins than, than cons in terms of this project. And if you have any questions, please let me know about the memorandum. standard for engineering that they're asking for. Is that old? No one does my alarm. They do it here. Alright. Okay. So a lot of this work on this memo well, a lot of it, most of it, was, was you know, Bob Lalashore and the Austin Prep uh, team. So uh, I, it, was, it was something that we asked for to get mitigation, and I think that, you know, Bob kind of championed that for us and came up with a plan uh, representing the town and the conservation department. So I, I actually sent him an email this morning when I saw her sign thanking him for all his hard work. I, I mean, I can't be any happier to know that this is still possible at this point. So, so is this is, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm being a little thick. Is this a two-part thing? It, it, there is a study that needs to be done? This, yeah, so there was a, a study, it's kind of like the first couple of inches of a study and then now it has to get more in depth because you know the town's going to be involved in this project they want to know exactly where to spend their money and where the best where things are going to work so they want to look at it first and and understand what's going to happen but if if things go well and it'll help the flooding that's happening uh, on Willow Street, then the town will buck up and, and do the culvert within the Austin Prep uh, Causeway area. That's all I understand it. Did I say that for you? Okay, so that's what I have. But there is, there is that next step study, kind of to get it. It hinges on. Yeah. No, but if it and then if, if it does ameliorate flooding, then they would go ahead with the reconstruction of the culvert. If that's what they're... If it... Is, so the, the, it, it looks like from that study that there's... It's not just the culvert, it's other things too. 
but the but you couldn't do other things and then still have that culvert there. It's 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 part. It's one leg of this um, drainage table, so it has to happen. And you know the other part might be that they're um, working around town with the mosquito control group to come in and make sure that all the streams um, aren't blocked and they can be blocked naturally uh, throughout the years by sediment, by trees falling in them and rotting and whatnot and it just backs up all the water and that becomes a problem so they're going to be looking to do some work out there also. Um, I think both those things have been discussed so that won't be a surprise. So the, the study area is a 60 acre area that combines Austin Prep land and some land down into West Street. Okay. Anybody have any more questions on this Just memorandum? Have one to them. Understanding? I see that this was signed by the headmaster and also all the select board. I assume this passed muster with the, the town manager and the town solicitor. That's my understanding, sir. They were they were both at the meeting last night. Okay. Yeah. I just didn't see them on the signatory page. I just didn't know whether this had to go before them for final approval. Town manager. The town manager and the town solicitor. So the uh, the town council was present last night. This original draft of this was sent to the town council and to the town manager um, back around June fifth. Okay. And. Um, been sort of bouncing around since then. Uh, it's a lot of it was waiting for the AECOM report that um, I understand. I haven't seen it, but I understand it came in this week. And um, once that came in, um, originally the contribution that Austin Prep was going to make was forty thousand, based on our calculations as to how much it would cost. The town asked us to increase that by thirty-five thousand to cover potential unknown variables and the school agreed to do that. We, we've been working uh, with the town on this to try to be a good neighbor and we know that the town is concerned about the health of the Upper Jonah. And we know that the town has on the top of their list their concern for the flooding of Willow Street and so now is an opportunity to, to try to work with the town and, and resolve these issues. I kind of understood the technical aspects of it. I just was concerned that this, it, it, if it needed one more approval, that it's another hurdle that you guys would have to cross before you get started. No, um, time-wise. Yeah. No. Ho hopefully, hopefully, this this is the final loop on that. Um, the money's already. The school is basically has it available, and um, they've agreed to to make this contribution. So there was some, uh, so we sent out the order of conditions and Chris and the team looked it over and uh, made some changes uh, on page 13 and page 16 which were not substantive and then when we get down to page 26, so everything up to page 26 was acceptable. A3 and A4 talk about a bond, and I think Oster Prep was hoping that we wouldn't require a bond for this project, but I can't recommend that. I think that um, we had uh, a couple of fits and starts with the last replication project that we did, and um, I think it would be needed. If, if you guys have any input on on eliminating the bond, uh, you can talk about it now, but you can see his comments. Does everyone have, have enough things? Do you have one? I guess uh, maybe we can start with Chris. Chris, do you have a, do you want to bring, like, is there a, a reason to eliminate this portion? Well, uh, I mean, the, the reality is, is the school's been here for as long as I've <laughs> been alive. They aren't going anywhere. Um, we have to get a certificate of compliance. We have, this, the school has basically agreed to make a, 
what, what I would consider a huge contribution in terms of the culvert work. We have other phases of this project, I mean, in terms of the improvement of the campus. So we aren't going anywhere. We don't really view ourselves as, as risk with, with all due respect. And we know we need certificates of compliance, and we know we have to work with the town on this. And I think we've shown our good faith working with the memorandum of understanding with the town. So we just ask for a little give and take. I mean, increased, when the town said, can you increase the contribution by 35000 the school looked at it deeply and, and said, yeah, we can do that as a good neighbor. And we just sort of request that the, that the board considers that in this request. That's that's all I, it was just basically um, as a sign of good faith. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I think, Chuck has a great minute against this. I, I think I'm in, in agree with that. I, you know, in, in general, I think that bond is provided good protection to the town of if if something goes wrong that we have the ability to kind of step in and, and make some <laughs> effort to raise their taxes. And, and I think the number freaks people out sometimes, but the reality of the bond associated with that number is is a lot less. And right. I, I think it's it's good protection for the yeah. town. And and like you said, we we've, we've we had the issue with the last one. I, I think yeah. I'm I'm in favor of keeping it. So and I am too. And and I I'm really liking this project. I think it's going to be a, something great for the, the the town. But given you know the other project and the issues we kept going back and forth on, uh, it's just a, you know insurance for us. That's that's the one thing. And just so the applicant knows. The town doesn't let us use any of that other money. Yeah, this, this, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, yeah. That's that's not for us. Yeah. You know, it's not. It's it's another good, good point, Chuck. We're yeah. a family here at town hall, but we, we're not sharing our money. <laughs> yeah. So um, the bond would go towards if there was a problem with um, in between uh, stages of this project, and we had to get out there and and hydro seed the field because. You stopped for a while just you know not going to happen but just in case or getting um, this replication area going or something that we don't even think about but that that money is instantly available to the Conservation Commission to make decisions to protect the environment so that's why it's important um, so hearing that that's so I don't know if you, I don't think you need to make a, a vote on that so We'll just leave that. There was something else on that on that page, which was um, the stone or concrete bounds. But I did talk to Chris, and I guess the the bound is going to be a four inch by four inch granite or concrete. I don't know shaft, not really a shaft, but a bound. And this goes on top of it, so it's 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 basically three feet with that on. And then Chris Huntress asked me if um, going not on the 25-foot line but in back of the split rail fence would be okay. And I think based on what we've done before, that would be fine because we don't want anyone tripping over it, running into it. Yeah. It's like that. So moving on to page 27. 15. I have page 27 here. I know, it's 15. Page 27 or 15. Um, the last item we're just going to remove. And um, it's, it talks about the tennis courts. We're just going to remove that all together from this order. And the other item, I didn't ask you guys about this, but should I? Go ahead. I recommend that we just accept what Chris has written because it seems to be very, not very much about um, conservation. Conservation, I. Yeah. Okay. And it, it, it And it does say that the town can you know, deal with the school in whatever manner they feel like to accommodate sports programs. I felt that was that was fine. Um, I'm fine yeah. And those were the changes. I know those are, yeah. Okay, I have some comments. On page... 17? I don't have, this, I don't have the first part. I just... This is this is you split this up. I don't have the form in front. I just have the <coughs> documents starting with the documents. That's one. So it's on page four, <coughs> uh, number ten, fifteen. 
I'm gonna go to the So in the document section is number ten. Yeah. Okay. At the end. Um, all those um, species of uh, wildflower seed mixes are all capitalized. It doesn't need to be. Um, but can you also include sensitive fern in there? And also, um, you might want to mention the three um, maple trees, red maple trees, and um, the arrowwood and silky yep. dogwood. Silky dogwood. Do you have that written down? You showed me before that you wrote some things down. Do you have silky dogwood and arrowwood on it? I didn't put it? that in. Is no. it possible to just reference the plan? Because that yeah. showed the... Okay. Can, I, I'd like to be more specific. <laughs> because we, because it, it, this one just says the seed mix. But we said stuff in the meetings. Okay. So if I get your copy that has those changes and I add arrowwood and silky dogwood to it, that's the list? Yeah. Okay. Anything else, Madam Chair? Yes, number 22. The, the, uh, the applicant estimates a six-month construction period. I thought it was three to four months. Or, or do you just want to... Stretch well, it out because it the only reason it would stretch out is if we go over the winter. We're going to start in September. Okay. I have no idea. Take if we go out. three months, we might have to break. Right. Becky, Becky, where? What? Number tw it's 22 under. Page what? It's my page six. 21. Oh, no. So. Yeah, so Sorry. I'm looking at page 21 as well. Yeah, it would be 22, yeah. No, all right. Um, oh, oh, interesting. Number 15 on page 17. Yes, thank you. I'm not on the computer. And then... Were we changing that? Or? I think six months is probably how long it's going to take. Yeah, that's fine. It is number 15 on page 17. It's right at the top. It says uh, the applicant estimates a six month. And under a five. And under um, list of additional conditions, a dash five. Austin Prep shall implement the following mitigation measures to offset encroachment into the no build zone and zone of natural vegetation and the roof front riparian zones. And then there was just and then you mentioned the um, memorandum of understanding. Yeah. Okay, that was it. Okay. All those in favor? I make a motion to issue the order of condition that as amended. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Great. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Now you're really in trouble. That's right. Check the paper. I want to thank the.
of the commission for your considerations that support this project. As I said previously, we will be good neighbors and we will work in partnership with you to make this a win-win for the town. Right. Great. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Wow, we're done pretty wow. early, except... Wait a minute. No, no. I, we need to wait to at least 20 past. For <laughs> what? There may be somebody because showing up. Because 82... Uh, what's it? 82 Fairchild. And Nikki, did you make it here? We were trying to guess to make good things would happen. I was like, oh, six. Six. What happens at 20 Well, he told uh, 82 oh. Fairchild, I was trying to guesstimate when he had something to do, and I said, I thought that 15, 10 pass, 15 pass would be fine. But there's, there's Doppler, um, uh, we can talk about, I'm not aware that they're I coming in. I don't have a, I've been for some reason. So, so every time. So I was just wondering if there's a. So oh, there's one right there on the board. Right here, oh, I didn't know you put them up there. Um, oh. For everyone to grab. I have a ton of paper and I presented it in that one. Here's the last one. Ah. Put you. You out. You out. Lasted the. Uh, friend up on the. Uh, don't say anything. Yeah, don't, yeah. Don't, yeah. Don't, yeah. don't say anything. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> I got scalded last week. Two weeks ago. I realized. I realized. Go. Mm -hmm. Look at this. Right along. Which yeah. one's? Well, I drove by it. To this one. I think I threw out my agenda. It was it's all right. I was wondering what I you were saying. I don't know why. I don't want to see it. But can we get one? Yeah, we can get some electronic ones. Oh, I think I got eight twenty-two. Like there's a yeah. We got a lot of emails from Chuck this week. The last two weeks. All of them. Oh, so those trees were really good. That's good. This last page, yeah. Yeah, but they're already ten feet tall. I could see. Okay. After receiving a, if I can't read email after email after email with the same title, <laughs> that sp spam, a <laughs> spam would so pick, goes up. pick up and say, well, that's, not, that's somebody that's not supposed case. to be sending messages to me. <laughs> yeah. You know how to do this. So what do we have left on you? With uh, Frank. I'll take your chat. That's it. And then, yeah, but wait, there's two fair child discussions. Well, I said, Sensibilis, and also Sarah Mabel, Asa Rubin, Six Arrow, and Six Silky, Dogwood, Forest, and Lumen. All right, so. Sounds good. I said, wait, you have the wrong, wait, because it's his daughter. Thank you for mentioning that. Not only twice. I said, your son. When they were here. Oh, yeah. Frank, your son got engaged. He said, I got it now. I said, just making sure. I got it. And I said, wait a minute. Okay. Um, did you all right? <laughs> he said, yeah. And I said, all right. I'm, like, oh, I'm with David. Let's see what's going on here. Yeah. Can we talk about the other thing? What? He's scared. He's like, what do you mean? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
when no, the, the, he's he's coming. He, he'll he'll be here later. Okay, and Doppler he, isn't coming. And we should do that now. One twenty-eight and eighty. Eighty-two. <laughs> yeah, Doppler. That's great. Doppler is the one that we had pro approved, but we we went out and took a look at it. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> and we took a look at it, Chuck and I, and there was. There were some guys out doing construction, and there was sand piled up that was falling over the uh, erosion control into the wetland. But there was also a tree that was leaning this way, and it was scunned, like the bark was kind of ripped off way up high. Did you take a look at it, Carl? Yeah, this is one. I have pictures. Is this 182 pictures? 128. 128. 128. Gotcha. A picture of the dent in the ground. And then I didn't see it, but Chuck said that there's all kinds of disturbance in the wetland itself beyond the erosion control because oh, they okay. said they were going to take a, they were going to use a crane, but they didn't. Yeah, so this is what we saw, and I can zoom in, but I, have some good I feel like I'm stuck I mean, in a zoomed-in situation, which doesn't. But what we're looking at here is. Um, <laughs> it's just sad. <laughs> It, what, you, what I'm trying to show you is that these trees in this area got crushed when something oh, yeah. fell on it. Lush, lush, lush. And yeah. It's. Carl has some it, good pictures too. So can I just take a step back? Carl didn't it, get them. This, because I forget, we approved work on this project here. Oh, well, what were they doing? They were do, doing the construction. We just. What? Sorry. Uh, am I forgetting this project? Did we approve this work? Just the one where the wall was falling down and they wanted to rebuild the, the wall. There's a lot going on over there. Chuck, what's the status of this resident? Did we approve this work? Or? Yes, we did approve this work. We approved the work so they're so that the entire job includes so there was a flat area and a, and a fire pit and there was a kind of a graded area on a hill and they wanted to take away that hill and create a terraced backyard um, and they ended up taking all the topsoil and then all and then they chipped out the stone and they were going to add topsoil again this one so the first part was to um, remove the trees and that was subbed out and the second part was to uh, break up the ledge that kind of prevented them from creating this flat area. So, in in my opinion, they they were using a crane to remove the trees. Thought we discussed that at the meeting, um, but it but at the least they weren't just felling them into the woods. Uh, but it's, that's exactly what happened. They dropped several trees straight into the woods, straight into the wetlands, smashing everything out there. Um, and and they were. Well, if they had a crane, why were they filling? They the didn't crane? have a crane. They said they were going to use oh, it. They I was didn't. Say, that doesn't make sense. It, yeah. Okay. So. And Chuck, was the intent that if we didn't see this, they would just leave the trees? Or were they? Or were they? The, the trees were gone, weren't they? Oh yes, they were. But I thought that would happen. I don't know when that happened. Yes. So they but dropped those, them. And those were the them. trees that were down the side of the yard. Why? Why would they? Drop those towards the wetland. I don't know, maybe it was open space on the other side. What trees came down in the back or yeah. along the side? Well, kind of along the side, but then curving around yeah. towards the back. Because yeah. they were going to redo the <laughs> plant that is redo the lawn. I thought it was all ledge on the side. They busted through all the ledge, it looks like. Yeah. Can I see that? It's a few. Isn't this the place that a little stone wall and then they were going to build a higher stone wall with some stairs and extend the deck. This one was the one with the hot tub in the corner, right? Or fire pit? Fire pit. Uh, circular. Yeah. <laughs> fire pit, but then it had circular, a... Oh, it's a weird fire pit. Circular hot, you drink right. around it. Why not? And then they had the, the versa block wall that had caved in, fallen in. No, I don't think that was I don't think so. That's not this one. That's not this one. This was uh, the the resident. Um, I think the homeowner was a, uh, the owner kept on coming in rather than I think she, it was a, a woman that kept on coming in to explain the project and she was kind of getting information from the people who developed the plans. 
No. So mm -hmm. Thor from uh, Williams, mm -hmm. and Williams and Sparagus uh, worked with Michael Doppler on this project. And so they, they did have someone design it and, and you know, they went with Williams and Sparagus and, um, it, you know, it was a good design. They had the wetland down and all that. And I think that people were satisfied because they were awfully close. This is the one that you kept on, and you might remember which project we're talking about, but it was this, the retaining wall. You're saying, right. why do you have those two pieces, the retaining right. wall, meeting each other? And, and so this is that project. If that helps anybody remember what we're talking about. Yes, okay. okay. Now, okay. Please put yourself. So it was this the one that had a block wall that totally hey, caved thanks. in. They needed a variance on this one. Yeah. Okay, this was not the project that I was thinking. No, so okay. Sorry, Katie. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, Chuck, at, at this point, <laughs> we have. So, so wait a minute. So, there. Um, just to set set you guys up. So I so I went up there, and you know, there's a landscaper there working working the site. And he, his crew's there, and I did my pre-activity meeting and set up the erosion control and all that's all working. And then me and Becky come back, and just the two, two crew people are there, and they had dumped off some gravel and some sand, and they had some topsoil. All of it cascaded over the retaining wall and then filled the void and then poured into the, into the wetland area over the straw water. sock. I'm gonna call it, it's a straw water, but it's the straw sock. And, you know, yeah. Becky, Becky saw that and she goes, you might wanna come over here and check this out. And it was, you know, it was unbelievable that they, that they would do that. And the people there, you know, had been working all day and I don't know when this stuff got dropped off, but it, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't good. So we, we stopped the job. I stopped it with the building department. And I didn't approve their deck project. I asked them to clean it up. So they, they did clean it up. But when I was talking to the owner of the company, um, he had subbed out the tree work. And he, someone had just figured it was fine to drop these trees into the wetland. Who and was, was the tree guy? Who was the tree guy? Did you know? Well, I can I can find out. Um, so he was saying that that was subbed out, and by the time they time they got there, um, it, it was all down and everything was dragged out. But there was big depressions in there, and if we go through the, you know, someone someone cut this tree, which is on the other side of that straw wattle. Okay, it's not a tree; it's a shrub. But someone cut it, and it. It didn't make any sense to me. And then we have this happening here. Okay. And this shows a bunch of broken branches out there. And this is this shows down close on our side of this another shrub that was cut. That high bush blueberry is crushed. There's a branch. Okay. There's the up high. Oh, you're dying to say something. No. Oh, um, okay. you there's and there, there's the up high spot. And you, you know, so I, I was I was kind of dumbfounded that all this stuff could happen, and it, and and it was thought to be perfectly okay, but the owner is is the owner Doppler. Doppler, Michael Doppler understood. He just wasn't. He doesn't have a job that's going to allow him to be at home all the time, and you know. What what do you do? I mean, these guys who are operating the machinery basically didn't speak English. Yeah. Look, whether yeah. they I can mean, speak, I mean, they're not going to well, know. If it's not going to be told to them. It's true. It's we, we, have, we have a violation of the order of conditions, right? Things aren't happening the way they need to be happen. I mean, the whole purpose for writing an order of conditions is to set up the protections so that we have a leg to stand on if things are not done right. So... Who do we hold accountable for for not following the order of conditions? Do we hold ultimately it's gotta be the homeowner. Do we yeah. hold the homeowner? Yeah. Or do, the homeowner. do we also co make responsible, you know, the the 
contractor? Was a contractor? Because oh, if the, the contractor value. is being utterly is taking, oh, that's nice. Does yeah. And you, you, you know, will, do we? You will never accomplish anything chasing a contractor. No. Try to hold them accountable. <laughs> that just it, it'd be. It sounds like the one he's got is not necessarily a reputable contract, a well known. Uh, the, the guys are operating the equipment didn't speak English. Yeah. So we said so stuff and then just... something came back in English, but it didn't answer our question. So it's a tight space, but it did look very messy there, though. I mean, and the guy that owns the business is doing the work is probably not on site. He's probably hiring some. Check with that. It's, not, it's not my job to tell the guy how to run the business, to say, but, well, that's right. it, but it is our job what? to make the sure that, were that we can try uh, to hold them the to the order of conditions. That's, that's why we put that for But I think the conduit no, no, no. to the that has to go through the homeowner. Teacher, because he's the person who lives there that we have some ability to yeah. kind of make so the life miserable. Of. Sense. If he can't get his contract so, to fall in line, he needs another contractor. So if there's been. So what? So Chuck, what does the resident say about these violations? Well, I, I I believe that he was surprised that this had gone on. Um, Wait, he because he's not gonna he's not gonna well, <laughs> he's gonna look at oh, his on, work. Chuck. He's not gonna look into the. He was surprised thing. he got caught. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry to say that. You're here for what? Like, <laughs> seriously, if you you know you've got these wattles out and what the, what they were there for, if you see well. Well, here's, I can't, so here's, I can't so assume so. that the homeowner was home. Probably was not. Based on what his job is. So, I'm so not did we go sure. out there the day of the issue? No, we went out there afterwards, but it wasn't even cleaned up. And, and like you said, um, this guy, his name's Steven DeSico, and he um, he's the landscaper that's dealing with the landscaping portion of it and subbing out the tree work and subbing out the, um, you know, the stone work all that so I had a pre-activity meeting with him I told him what was going on and you know I'm not so sure about landscaping but when you drop a tree and it takes it takes bark off another tree is that just hey geez that's just too bad or is do you really think like I mean like as a carpenter if I painted someone's house and the paintbrush fell out of my hand and it fell on their bureau, would I just put their doily over it? I think there's you know? a complete disregard. I don't think so. I don't think they... Yeah, a doily wouldn't cover you. Have so. to use a towel. I don't think they even... <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> to paint them. So if, if they're operating... So it doesn't make any sense to me. I just, you know, just to finish the thought. To, to say... I think Carl had it... it they have zero, zero regard for the forest or the trees. They think that you know, what a million chance you're ever going to notice that that happened. That's and there are more trees out there, and so who yeah, cares? Of course, who cares? Well, yeah, I mean, that's, and, and all of that comes into tree didn't fall here. down. Okay. So. It does. And yeah, absolutely. It's just it's a tree. So mm -hmm. what's what's the next step? So I'm going to say what I thought the next step was out there. So so we work with Williamson Sparagis. And I talked to him about getting those guys back and checking this out and, and making recommendations. That's what I thought what needed to be done. But uh, Michael Doppler thought that he wanted to um, his landscaper. Yeah, use a landscaper, kind of approach this differently, and and so you guys can make a recommendation. I'm not. I don't want. I don't think Stephen DeSico has enough experience to, to, to do this work. So that was my fear. That's and, a landscaper, and, correct? Yeah. And then we also isn't what, what's respond to And Michael Doppler just needs some needs some help. And I think that so it's Greg Hawkmith and Thor, I don't know his last name. So what's the but, work? The work is going out there looking at the condition of the trees that have been damaged, the condition of the, of the wetland that's been damaged and making recommendations as to how to repair it. So so not to go like totally off the, you know, the, off the wall here. The wetland will come back. Well, the, you know, the trees will probably come back. Maybe there's something that should be done to them like cut off that broken piece, um, what not. And maybe some more planting needs to be done. It looked like there was a huge open space now. Yeah, mm -hmm. I thought it was very bright, and, and I didn't know where the I couldn't find right. the stumps. Right, and I talked about shading and yeah. stuff like that. It looks like it's very. 
it's open now. There's a lot of a lot more light going in there. So I I didn't I, f figuring that there were um, experts that w already worked with these people. And they want to make recommendations about how to protect the tree or what to do about the trees now that they've been, you know, the bark's been knocked off it, or what to do in the wetland. And on top of all that, if the planting plan, which is a substantial planting plan already in place, would take care of these things. I think it needs to be evaled and then some some recommendations made. I, That's my thought. I agree with you about evaluating it and getting some professional recommendations. I think a second piece to this is also making a more rigorous limit of work boundary something more rigorous than a hay bale or than, even a hay bale. Oh, than, than a hay bale than, than a saw yeah, was... that nobody can see and I'm not excusing that because they still need to be aware of it. I mean, you know what I, what I think ridiculous. a more rigorous did we approve demarcation these, these of the things? limits of work would be really good. We we use them in some places, but this 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 was one of those areas where it would have worked because they were supposed to stay on the other side of the retaining wall. This was supposed to be away from the retaining wall, you know, two to three feet, and, and that's it. They could stand on that side of the retaining wall to do whatever, but most of the work had to happen on the other side. Because what's the proximity of that of that mulch to that's the wetland? The it's like well, the that's 20... That's one of the things, the points that I was going to make. They that That retaining wall, block retaining wall, was already inside the 25 foot line. If you remember, the corner of their deck that they wanted to put the right. addition on was inside the 35 foot line. So they, they were already well inside the 25 foot line. So they already knew that they were, they were, they were inside some place where no one would normally be able to already do already do anything other than the fact that it was already there when they built the house so yeah. that was something that was well known when they and were I going through the this process darn close to that retaining wall yeah, exactly. I, mean, I, I, two thought, feet I thought in my head that blue flag I took the same picture you did yeah. I was standing there thinking man this seems really close even to the straw swaddle I thought but they're gonna have to work I mean yeah. so you needed to give them two feet yeah. I mean even, well, that's just how it ended up being so but it's clear too when you're there. Those you walk right down the path and you can see them, and they're so, staked, and it's like kind right. of obvious that there's a limit of. <laughs> I think that straw wattle with construction fencing would be better than the yeah, orange, hay orange bale. construction fencing yeah. and, and stakes. Would because be there's you introduce different species into the wetland when you do the hay bale. Well, I think something more rigorous might draw everybody's attention to the fact right. that you don't go past this. Oh, you. you don't touch any of this. I mean, tempted to recommend, not make it a requirement, but recommend that they, you know, throw caution tape at eye level around all the trees above the... Get signs that say minefield. Yeah. It's just, it's sloppy work. It is it's sloppy work. work. The whole site was very messy, it, I thought. It, these guys that had the, the, yeah. the, the sand was just slopped into the The sidewalk was a mess. How do you, how do you, so, what do you do? Should, I don't know. Should we, is this the point at which we also could issue an enforcement order just to memorialize the event? That this is above and beyond what was agreed to in the order of conditions and and here's something else to say this happened and something's got to be done about it I don't know I mean I think what is it what beyond the order of conditions does, does it get you what do you think do you copy the planting plan I mean does it make well, I don't know. Just so, so, so you have the isn't violation. Part of, isn't part of the enforcement the the request that this gets reevaluated by a, a qualified engineer or land? Obviously, well, that's okay. But somebody qualified to evaluate what this new change condition. I mean, isn't that how we? So with an enforcement order, you could you could make recommendations, but. You, you can say whatever you want. Right. I mean, isn't that they've they've gone beyond what we issued in the order of conditions? 
we want this reevaluated by a professional to make sure that the plant, current planting plan that's included in that order is applicable. Don't we need the order of conditions, uh, the, the enforcement order to? To you need an enforcement order with an that. unwilling, you know, applicant. But you know, you could do, you could request that happens, request. and if it doesn't, then you could, you, then you could issue an enforcement order. It's just that we have an order of conditions, and ultimately, this stuff has to be cleaned up because he doesn't get a certificate of compliance, and I haven't signed off on the on the deck project, so he's not even getting his deck. Oh, okay, uh, I'm right. good. I think <laughs> good. good. So, so. With the planting plan, does this clean up this area? I guess that's a question too. Yeah. So it's not. So just so you know, there's an extensive planting plan already requested. I, I don't have the right uh, thumb drive. All right. So, but so I can't show you. But they were doing a lot, and I I just want whoever looks at it to to understand that planting plan, and then to make recommendations. It might be far less than we think. You know. Yeah, but. But the trees, I'm not so sure about. Can I make a suggestion? Yeah. Can we have the the homeowner uh, bring back the wetland scientist and have them do an assessment as to what has gone on on the site, and then give some kind of a report as to how they would correct any and all of the conditions that currently exist to work towards a uh, an end. I think that's and a, you know a, a satisfactory end. I think that's a good step. I think that's exactly what, we're, what we've all been talking about. I yeah. think that, that more or less what we've said. They already had them come out, and they already had to make in the plan. They should be able to come out and tell the homeowner, oh boy, someone made a boo-boo here. This is how you make it right. And, and even if the homeowner is, through no fault of his own, unable to manage the project because he's not home, and he's maybe kind of a victim of this whole thing, rather than just turning a blind eye, maybe he just has decided not to micromanage it. So a lesson learned for him, but certainly the people that are doing the work for him need to know what they're doing. I mean, that was the whole point. And the, and the order of conditions it's set up, it says that they need to have a 24-hour phone number for someone, and that person's in charge. And in the, and you have to have the order of conditions on site. And it's it's almost like passing off the baton when you're doing the 4 by 4 100 to tell the guy that's staying there, look, you know, this is what's going on. You need, if the, the tree guys are coming here, you got to watch them, make sure they understand these things. I mean, it's, it's serious work. And I told DeSico, I said, you don't have a guy on this project that when you leave, he feels like he's in charge. You go, because everyone just did whatever they wanted to. Well, and you know where most, most relay races are lost, in the Compass. I drop them down. Yeah, so if it, the, not, not to be the over metaphoric, but the fact is, if, if it's not going from hand to hand, if one person's not passing on the information correctly to the other, it gets watered down pretty quick. You, you've metaphor. got somebody down the line, one or two batons, isn't bolstering the information. More champion games than championship games than I have. Okay. I like Dave's, Dave's suggestion, but you could also take it a little further and have, you know, maybe an environmental monitor on the site. Which could be the same. That could yeah, be part be, of the recommendations. Would be, uh, they would be perfect. Right. So maybe when we get them in, that's the question. I, I mean, my, my take would be maybe that it's possible that that's a question for the professional is do they recommend that there is an environmental monitor and, and at what frequency? When When's the right time? Because I, I'd be mm. interested to know when's the right time to have them out there rather than just say, well, on all projects or just this one? Just this one. one. So they, they haven't stoped work, right? They don't overreact to one. Right, Jack. What's that? They haven't stopped work, right? They're they're working. They're working. Just not building a deck. <laughs> <laughs> so a qualified professional, knowledgeable in wetland biology. If there's such a separation. Wetland habitat. Wetland science. Wetland science is is a good. It's for a report to assess and make recommendations uh, to correct this issue. And it has to be presented to the commission. Um, but in the meantime, 
can we just have a better limit of work? We don't need to wait for that, do we? I don't know what everybody's sent to me. Are we requesting the, the hay bales, uh, staked hay bales with a construction, construction. fence? Not the hay no, bales, the hay we bales but if we stuff, just left just the, the sock there and then a construction fence, fence behind it. I mean, the sock, the straw in the sock is cleaner than the hay. But you said the sand and the, the loam. They cleaned that up right away. They, oh, they did okay. actually a pretty good job. I told them to dig until they saw the duff layer of the leaves. Okay. And then, and so that was, you they know, when told, it. it was just, okay. you know, again, it's like. They just didn't know. Like they didn't think anything of it. You know, it's like, oh, no one's going to. Uh, learning question. <laughs> learning questions. So time for learning right. questions. Yeah, when the debris did go over the wall, right into the wetland, then Chuck said, dig until you see the little leaf, the leaves. Does that itself, I mean, was it, if it's a big enough pile, does that it itself cause damage, though? The tampering and the digging past if they don't pay attention again? Well, if they it dig into the soil, <laughs> yeah. But, but ultimately, just like the areas where stuff fell and it was yeah. crushed, it's going to grow back. It, right? Yeah, okay, so it's, it's, it has it's caught in time, it come, it, it's, Beyond, Resolved, you know, mostly. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, don't know if I, 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 I didn't take any pictures. I didn't take any pictures of that. So, um, at least with this. But, um, yeah, that's what you're looking at. All right, so I have uh, a knowledgeable professional, uh, a qualified professional knowledgeable in wetland, wetland science to report, to write a report, to assess, and make recommendations to correct the issues on site and then present the report to the commission at the next meeting. Install an orange fence to eliminate to that? the, uh, you know, no build, no, no go zone, limit of work. Any that other? sounds good. Three I think time. those are the two basic issues, you know. Um, maybe the limit of, you know, maybe that waddle is way down at the bottom and they're working way up here and they just literally don't see it. Out of sight, out of mind, and, you know, so. Does it make any sense that the people that have been to the site to have a different access point? I mean, is that access point something we want to talk about? Like, go around the entire house and come in the other way? Or... I don't think that makes sense. Isn't that a steeper hill? They just took it out of there. But where I walked in, is the access over the sidewalk to the backyard? That's how I walked through. Down the driveway. Oh, no, I walked the other way then. Yeah, so that's... That could be the that could be the access point. Okay. Or you could you could make a recommendation not to have any uh, you know staging area off the driveway. Mm-hmm. Do you like that one? Okay. It's all legend. It's there's a lot going on. Over the side. It's, it's it's now back there. Like this. See? It's like all the legend. All right. And that's like a big wall. Sounds good. Kind of intense. Okay. All right. And we have Scott. Scott. It's going down the street. Yeah. Go well, back up the street. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So, 82 Fairchild Drive. The timing was good. Mm -hmm. Yep, so every um, members of the commission made a site visit. Me and Becky went out to the site. We met Scott and his wife, which I forgot her name. Lindsay. Lindsay. And we had a conversation about all the things that have to do with the buffer zone and work and all that. I don't know if any other members made it out there. I, did, but I, I didn't know what was, I didn't see it before the trees were cut. And, um, 
yeah. there was just a bunch of poles around, so I couldn't so really get a good sense just of that. So there's a tree right here that was cut. So the first time I went through the street, and it's tough to see, and then I yeah. yeah. There's a tree right here that was cut. Yep. And there's some trees in front of the driveway that were limbed up. Okay. I don't. I'm not sure. I don't think that that was a violation because we allow that. And here's one going up. Um, this is the backyard. Here's one here and one there. Uh, this is going up around the back of the house, uh, past the past the deck, and now, as you can see, there's no fence. There's a fence now. That's why it looked funny to me, because I didn't see a fence in the picture. And there's some more trees in this area here. This one looks old. That one, something there, and. Um, there's that one again, and that's that's the extent of my pictures. But I did check on Google Earth, and it looked like there were a lot of trees out there, not just four. It looked like a lot more than four. And well, it's pretty nicely treated, though, by the other two sides of the of the house. Well, but the front, you know, the, the other know. side of the corner. What's that? The the. The other two sides of the house. Shouldn't we have seen? Out of the street, side? street side. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the, the lot is pretty well treated. I wouldn't say that. There's only a few trees on the lot. Yeah. Do you think that is a so, lot? So when you say you think there was more it? trees, is it like are you saying like there were stumps that were grinded and no longer there? And there's well, all there along the, the I think there was there was a lot of trees what? along where the fence is going. So all all those were removed. So it's a fence, and then there's mulch next to the fence, you know, whatever happened there. But the 100-foot the buffer zone only goes up the hill, past the deck, maybe a little bit more. I was telling Scott that it was about three panels up on the fence, three or four. So um, the ones that you're talking about are potentially outside of the jurisdiction? No, mm -mm. no. The ones that were in the jurisdiction. The more. I'm talking about more. We've got four that we've seen stumps. But we think there was more? Clarify that. I, I, I guess I don't remember. Do you know how many were, did you count, or we, were we able to count? I, I'd be happy to. There's it. no way to say more, other than to say that the stumps that are there are are above the ground. You know, if they were, if they were ground down and whatever was put over them, I don't know. There's certainly mulch at, there's certainly mulch on the other side of the fence and that could cover up to some trees. And there's certainly the Google Earth picture that shows more trees. So, I mean, the, the intent was to clear all the trees out between his house and the neighbor's house. And, and, that, and there's no trees there. There's only some of that in land that's conservation, a conservation issue. Right, so I wasn't going to go out there and start Dig breaking mulch. away mulch and all that, but... So how many did you easily identify in the conservation jurisdictional area? Probably four, three, how many? Do you want to... You wanna... Yeah, so here's the original invoice. Oh yeah, we asked him to bring it. He invoice. asked me to bring it oh, and you yeah. together. And it's, it's inked. Would you like... Sure, you like? sure. Yeah. Um, and so that's actually with him standing at the back of my driveway. Okay, on the, the large oaks place. on the right, that's yeah, not so in a, that was okay, they were limbed. Remove five large oaks at the end of the driveway, remove six medium pine trees on right. So the medium pine trees are on Lindsay Lane, they're... Okay, wait, yeah. Like, if you go, I don't know if you ever yeah. drove around, but there was... So I one. saw Lindsay Lane so past your like, house. Yeah, so there was this pine, there was a row of six pine trees that I had taken So down. the six medium pines are out of our That's right. Yeah. Right. Tr trim, remove row of arborvitaes. Where were the arborvitaes? So the arborvitaes were, um, I don't know if you recall, because I'm not sure, I don't believe you went that far up. The row of arborvitaes were about maybe from the closest pine tree to the closest arborvitae tree was probably 
20 feet, 25 feet to on, on my neighbors and I right on the line. Did you and there was about six of them. Uh, not six of them, there was about three of them. Um, but that row of arborvitae, they were, you know, yeah. planted there probably in 1992 or so. So they were about 40 it feet looks tall. Like, it looks like it's five large oaks at the end of the driveway. So that's correct. So there's, there was the oak that's next to the... Um, the, the, uh, the shed, Is and then one, then there was I have a basketball net. There's a couple. There was a couple oaks going up the back side of the basketball net. So it's Is that your house there? One, two. Yes. Yep. That show, do, are those oaks that you're talking about still there? And then the yes, and they're on the. Can you want to? Yeah, you want to point them out on the picture for us? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Do, yes. sure. Yeah. Um, do you want to pass this? So this, so there's my shed. There's one, there's one, and then it looks like it. It looks like. Like my driveway's right here, so there's another one right here, another one right there. That's that was the second and third, and then I took this one down. Four. And I believe there was one more right here, and then the row of arborvitaes is. Yeah, it's these five. It's back. They're back, like back. Oh, you can actually see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, Google fine. Street. And then the pines are there's like six so different areas. Yeah. Oh, there, there's two of them right there. Yeah, yeah. So that's so Wall Street is, is Lindsay. So yeah, so that, that's Lindsay over there, yeah. And then, when, so when I moved in about three years ago, there's actually a stump. Um, he's he's correct. There's, there's a stump that's showing there that I didn't, it was already down when I moved in. Actually, there's two of them that were already down when I was in. So, and they're right by where, uh, I believe you took a picture where I keep my son's hockey nets, and they're kind of tucked in there. I didn't do anything with the stump, but the stump is still there. It appears as though I cut that tree down, but I didn't. Okay, so five trees. So, like, correcting me, like I said, when we said one, two, three, four, five is what five I said. Books. So, any, were any trees cut as you enter your driveway to the left? The one next to the shed. Just the one between the driveway and the shed? There's four, there's, there's three or four more to the facing my shed to the left of my shed. Got it, I see which one. I were trimmed up. I think there's three. That's right. The, there's three over here. Okay, right here. we don't These care about the trimmed ones, ones okay? Yeah. And then Just the ones that were cut. One, so, yeah, so the two, one that was uh, next three, to my shed. Four, five. That's what I'm thinking. Five. If you see the invoice, it's five yeah. large oaks. And I can see them from yeah. the driveway, and now I can picture what I was, where I was back there, that, that was the open area. So I can stand in front of you and honestly sit here and tell you. Two. There were not. Three. I know he's he's and I respect it, but I I didn't sit there and cut down a whole mess of trees. Um, did, was the mistake made? Yeah, I, I had him out there. There was and you and I have been over this. I don't know three or four times. Uh, Rebecca, you were out there with us, and I mean I could sit here in complete stupidity, but I believed what I believed, and I did what I had done, and I had my other tree guy. I had my tree guy here. I think two weeks ago. I called you right after I got the certified letter. Um, I explained to you within an hour of signing that certified letter, well, why, why did I get this? So, I mean, I'm standing here looking at you saying I, I don't exactly know why it happened the way it happened, but it did. So, whatever I, whatever I need to do to fix this problem that I've created, I'll do, okay? Yeah, so we've got what we've got at this point, and I think we've got, between this and what we're seeing here, I think we've got an idea of the quantity that we're in our mm -hmm. jurisdiction, I think. That helps us a lot to figure out where it needs to go, I, at least from my, my perspective. So, I guess the question is, Chuck, um, we're talking about five oak trees in our jurisdiction. I don't believe the other ones that were cut were in our jurisdiction, the pines of the Arborvitae. Um, would we request that he file an RDA, or what should he be doing? I think that you guys know all the options. You should make what do you guys think. Well, what's the where? So this this wouldn't. Happen? So just to put it into perspective, this wouldn't have met the tree policy anyways. So with the five and the trimming, which I think there was some work done in back of the in back of the house, so it probably would have been maybe six or seven that would be in our jurisdiction. Because I I think that. I can't remember what that was, that line between the two houses. Was that the row of Abravides? Because it says, remove Abravides. It says, so it says, yeah, it says yes, on the, you know. This, this was Abravides right here. 
62 of them. This That's correct. Right. Yeah, so some of those would have would have been in. No. I don't believe so, but that I guess it all it's all it all depends on where you're going to where you're going to go. This is just my opinion. Of course I'm not. But where are you going to stand in the in the what how how far back you're going to go? Where does that start? Where, where does it start? Where does it end? It starts with um, so, so it goes, goes up here. 100 feet. Right, right here. It goes the from. I would say so it goes the wetlands right behind the shed. So mm -hmm. this is wet. So that's so. Wait, okay. Wait, no, wait, that's not no, the no, shed. No, that's, that's buffer zone. Yeah. So that's okay. you know, wetland in this direction. Chuck, where's the shed? I see the shed. Okay, right behind that is the wetland. Wetland's probably right there on the shed because that's where the skunk cabbage was. Okay, and see the skunk cabbage. Okay, so a hundred feet upland. Can you just kind of give us from, a, a measure from that problem? line, from the wet area around is your shell our, is, is our area. jurisdictional area. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so so any tree removal or any tree work, okay. any ground disturbance, any digging. Within, within that line. hundred feet, requires some permitting process through us. Okay. I mean, I, I, yeah. I don't know. Hundred feet is further than I, I stated, but I, I when so, I was out on the field, I thought it was here. Okay. The, the line's not is hasn't even started at the back side of my shed, and and I and I actually had the property surveyed, so there's a there's actually a stake out there. For what? I had the property surveyed, so I can see where the property line was. So we're not property talking line. about the That's property right. line stay. We're not talking about property line. We're talking about the wetland line, which they went out in the field to visually inspect during the site visit. Would you? So does that start, like, right at my shed, or does it start at That's the back end of my shed? Pretty much what Chuck was telling yeah, you so is it starts like midway. Your shed is a little bit in the wetland, a little bit out. Okay. Because we, it's so don't, uh, so wet doesn't mean surface water. Okay. It means soils and vegetation. <coughs> Back at this fence, there was plants of skunk cabbage, which is a wetland indicator plant. So it is pretty wet back there, but there's a lot of dumping going on back there too. So, you know, somewhere in this area is the wetland. It's not back here where the stream is but somewhere in this area. And then somewhere up here is the 100 foot line. So being conservative, I, I said it's there. And I was wondering about the Abravites that were along this area, plus the five trees. So that's, that's kind of what I thought, because I was out there before they were cut with Bob Moses. And um, So that's why I asked you, I mean, were there abravite along this area between uh, down so, this low, or did it start kind of more So no, there was, the, no, there was abravite about right with that line. I would say a little further down, but it's probably started about at, I don't know, maybe 90 feet, 88 to 90. There was a tree overhanging this Yeah, that's, that, that's correct. That's one I pointed to one of those, yeah. Okay. Pointed to those, yeah, it was overhanging over. Yeah, yeah. Correct, the, yeah, the deck looked like yep. it needed some work and rotted because yeah. of right. the tree. Yep. Oh, yeah. Very shady back here. Let's see if I can get a better angle. Okay. <coughs> so did the did that invoice um, number the number of ARPA ID? No. No, it didn't. So if you want to look at it, but it also says there was like trees removed on the right side of the the right side of the drive, which I didn't understand. Board lodge oak trees on the right side of the driveway and looking at so the you, So that's because he was standing, when he wrote it, he wasn't facing the driveway, he was he was facing toward the street. He was actually standing like out by my basketball net. Yeah. Facing out, that's, that's how he interpreted it when he did it. <laughs> what, huh? <laughs> Can you do it like that? Yeah. Okay, uh, because then, then, then it's the four to the right, trim <laughs> four lodge oaks to the right, which means the left, Oh, the right. So was he facing? Yeah, that's what he's saying. So he was facing the road when he wrote this. Face. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Quote. Right. But we know that it's from the street looking mm -hmm. to the left. It's probably right on the edge. Right. That's correct. It's, it's definitely the, the oak trees. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. And 
And it says remove six medium pine trees, and those were up the up front, right side of house. So, how many? Did the site visit? Lend any credence to yep. counts Six. or the not the other ladies because it was all mulched over. Oh, okay, okay, thanks. Um, and then these are the arbor vitae? Yep. Were was were these removed? No, those are there. Those are my neighbor's trees. Yeah, yeah. so that's that's getting out to your neighbor's property. Okay. So five. So it wouldn't. So it wouldn't qualify for the. So you would have looked at it in some fashion. Yeah. This this gets up to the level of an art. Uh, an yeah. Four and so you would yeah. need to. So if he came in here and he said, "Look, this is what I want to do," it would probably be a RDA because we wouldn't do a notice of intent for trees. Yeah. Yeah, RDA and <coughs> would explain to you that you need to replace those trees with native other native trees or shrubs and I know when we were in the garage because it rained um, we we're talking to Lindsay his wife and she said that they are going to replant things but we said that you need to plant it to to replace it it has to be within our jurisdiction yeah. so it needs to be from the edge of that wetland up to you know within that 100, 100 feet Did I say anything wrong? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> like, Makes sense to me. I don't think so. No, well, I mean, if, if so you were so planting, yeah, that's what you were going to be, you, what you would do. You have to plant within the jurisdictional right. area. Right. So, um, oh, we, are, we would probably be looking for request for determination of applicability, a, a permit. And I think, I th didn't so you talk to me? you in a, an enforcement order. What? Sorry. So you already have an enforcement. Did we sign an enforcement order? Did we? No. No, I. Well, I don't think so because I went out and took a look at it. Did we? Find, I don't recall. I don't remember. In the, it wasn't last meeting minutes. Yeah. Did we sign an enforcement order, guys? I have a draft enforcement order. It's not the signed copy, but um, is it it? The, the, this is it, and. Um, we don't specify what which way the signed. He, we request the resident to address um, the violation, but you can absolutely submit an RDA. I mean, I think stepping if that's back. the right next permitting step, then that's the right next permitting step. I think stepping back, we treat this just like I mean, obviously it's done, but but as if this were. The way we, well, the way why we are you shaking your head? No. Oh, I, I don't think you automatically have to go to a permit from an from an enforcement order. You can keep the owner in the enforcement or in the enforcement order and have complete control over the project. Yeah, but, but we have generally, to the enforcement order. To you can set write up. another one. So, but so when we do an enforcement, a lot of times within like a, a major enforcement order, we ask them to prepare a notice of intent. So I see that this is in a similar manner, right? It, it is. You can you, so to 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 have the gentleman do that step. I just think it just takes more time. Okay. And you could just cut. You have the solution to the working. enforcement is to yeah. You could just trees. work with what you already have. Okay. You don't have to like do all that and notify the butters. Blah blah blah. You could just keep it under an enforcement order. And move forward with whatever, whatever you want. Well, but so I guess this is what I get at, though the whole piece of notifying about, like those are the process. That's the process that should have happened. I mean, or what if the neighbor wanted to come in and say, "Well, I, I really think this should be, the replacement should be planted in this zone." What if I mean, that would have been the normal steps that we would have taken here, right? All right. Well, that's a good counter argument. I, I think that I was just saying. Yeah, you know we have something that works, but but it didn't it didn't allow others to talk. Well, we have the the homeowner right here. Can we talk among the commission and the homeowner and agree that 
He replaces five trees of uh, three trees and a yeah, certain Mike number was of saying the abutters don't get to weigh in on it, which they would have if he if it was an application in the first place. I mean, I if this came before us, it would have been notified. Abutters would have been notified. And if somebody came in and said, no, that that is, I, I've got an, a, an objection for this reason in regards to the wetland, or I, I think the replacement should be here, we would have listened to them. Did you talk to your neighbor in back of you about about the work? Next door to me, the house closed. Yeah, with all the Abervides were. Yeah. They're, 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 yeah. That's the only one that would be that's affected. Agreed. I, I think that's the only difference between saying, and, and so. And, and given that, do we really need that extra step to notify the abutters? Because in this case, they. How did we know about the tree cutting? Oh, because you met with oh you met with uh, Bob Moses out there, correct? Mm -hmm. So Chuck? Oh, I said yeah, but yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. that's how we knew about this. Bob so, Moses called me out to the site with tree cutting. Tree cutting was a call. What? No, no, no. Bob Moses had a potential job, mm -hmm. and he knew it was in a wetland area, and so he said, Chuck, can you come out here when I while well, I meet this? This person, this uh, the homeowner, and you can tell them what conservation wants, and I'll tell them what I want as a as a tree contractor. How did we know that after the fact, after that happened? How did we know? Well, driving up the road to check on uh, 128 Fairchild, okay. we, we you know I had been there, and that that's what I was at. That was, it wasn't a call, and I called Bob yes, up. And that's that's a good point. And I said, Bob, usually what's going that's on? how we find out. And the neighbors, without notification, notify us. So in this right. case, we had, they haven't called. I don't think that we need that step. That's fine. I agree. That's that's kind of the point I want to make. And the other things, I don't know, understand why. I, I know what happened, but why would he have to have an RDA? That's We haven't requested that from other people. Yeah, yeah we over do. Four, over, do. Over four over trees. Four we trees. changed that when... No. The guy that cut all those trees up and up a Main Street, next to Sumner Cheney Way, he didn't do an RDA. Is that Sumner Cheney Way up the Main Street? Right, 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 up north. Right, 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 right after it, the yellow house that we he cut far more than than four trees. He cut a whole bunch of trees. He did an RDA. He was here with Bob Moses. He what? He did. Yeah. He did an RDA. He did an RDA. Are you sure? We had two yeah. site visits. Yeah, that guy yeah, way up there with a trailer. I remember we did site visits, but I didn't remember that. He didn't but notify I'll, I'll him and all that, that other stuff. Go through I'll show you the RDA. Over four but trees. We, he did. I mean, that's why we made that. We, yeah. we yeah. made a change the guy knowing who, that there were a couple of projects coming through. Before Libby Ave. Remember that one on Libby Ave? Yeah. Before Libby Ave, we didn't have that. After Libby Ave, it went down to four trees. And then the commission knows. And that guy that was up in Upper Main Street notified all his neighbors? Yeah, yeah, he has an RDA. Okay. Okay. okay so well, we have to determine the quantity. Over eight. I heard five. Okay, five. Five, five, five oak trees. Five oak trees. Five oak trees and some. Let's oh, just no. pick, pick so an arbitrary have? number of arbovites. Four. Do you have a, a plan for what you think you would do for replacement? Have you thought about replacement in a time, time frame? Yes, let's talk about a time and frame too. And so this is an enforcement, so don't forget about... Well, Lindsay, his wife, expressed de desire to plant stuff around the house. And I, and we had talked to her and, and... So it could be in the fall then? Is that what the timeline is? Yeah, that would be a perfect time yeah. now. I don't know what that in your her thoughts were um, to do this now or... So... Um, if I was going to plant down by where, uh, it sounds to me like I have to plant closer to where the shed is. You can plant within a hundred feet. Within a hundred feet. That hundred foot area. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'd like it to be closer to the wetland than, than right. We we want to create a a good buffer, a good barrier. This may be sure. Of Juncture, it's not much like wrong. And to be honest, like with the so upper right, my take in the upper uh, right, yeah, they're on the edge. What that? Yeah. Yeah. So now because he, for other, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 the we talked about engineering. I'm going to give you a hard time. I don't even understand what some of you guys are struggling with. This is an enforcement order. He doesn't want the trees, okay? And he's, there's no room. Carl, you've been out there. If you plant some in back of the shed, they're going to be shaded all the time. It's well, they're going to choke each other out, right? That's all there is to it. I mean, I want to be nice to. So, so but, we're talking about uh, a monetary. Yeah, I don't steps. know what's going to happen plant if we plant the trees. I mean, it just else. you know, your desire is not to have the trees, right? Well, no, you you actually I I would. No, you if proved that by cutting them down. No, but but, <laughs> right? you, but, but, but we, you also talked about for every tree, two bushes. So, so like the fence that's falling down, that's in place right now. I want to replace that fence at some point, and I would like to do something in front of the fence. So that would make sense to put, I don't know, ten bushes. Is that, is that what you? I'm getting. Is this room? Do, do you think that there's no room? They, they, they would be. In, they would be in front of the fence. But, but the fence is the most down gradient part of your yard, so. I think it's a good thing. The white fence. Right? Right, so. There's a little white, like, four foot picket fence there. Three yeah. foot. Near, the, near the shed. Yeah. Okay. So, but. We just need to have this memorialized in some sort of document. Is this the fence we're talking about? He marks yeah. up a site plan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So where when, you, he's when you're talking about planting, what are you, what are you talking about? Behind? No, no. In front of the fence. Is the fence right on your property line? The, the fence is right on the property line. Yeah. And he came up with a good solution. Is it if you could get a site plan of your property and... Um, show the shed in your um and your fence film. and kind of locate where you think you could plant those shrubs or trees and we have a list of shrubs and trees that we are, are looking yeah. native shrubs and trees to provide habitat and i'm sure there are, are you know species that would be compatible and look nice in your yard okay. So, so we need a, a plan identifying something that after it's done, we can go back out in the field and verify it. And um, with the names and types of trees, and, um, and then some intention as to when that's going to happen. And sooner is better than later. We're still in the growing season. Yeah. For a short, oh, for a short Carl, window. Carl, yeah. when's, when's the typical cutoff? Is it October 15th? I would say mid like, middle of October. Now's the perfect time. I would think especially with this shaded area. I mean, the sun's going to just get lower and lower. Now's the perfect time to plant. So September? <laughs> so if I was to, to do that, I would, I guess now that I'm understanding all this, I would have to submit a plan to... If I was going to replace that fence, I'd have to submit the pl a plan for the fence first, right? What are you doing with the fence? Yeah. That picket fence that's basically falling down. Oh, you want to take that out? I, I would like to just... If I was going to plant in front of it, I would think I would want the fence to actually look decent. Because it's Didn't we talk about this out there, Chuck, that you felt that if you just replaced that? Is that fence there no. for aesthetic purposes? Back the or? fence. It was there when you bought the house three so years ago. If it was I, gone, know, I mean, I was there, care. but I wasn't there when you were talking to someone about the fence. Um, are you talking about replacing it, or are you talking about removing if it? You, if no, replacing it. Like putting, actually put, keeping the same footprint, but, but putting something that actually isn't falling down. But, okay, so the point is that I would put the plants in front of the new, uh, the, the, this, this newer fence that I would want to put up. At that point, we probably are talking in RDA. No, no, I, that's that's what I'm saying. So is if I was to do that, I think, and not I think that's what we're put plants about. in. I mean, I might as well have this discussion now. Then it seems to me that I would have to put a plan in. Let's just do all of it all. Right. Of that's my point. And he said that inside the garage when 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 we were standing there that if you if you wanted to if you were going to replace where it was sitting, then whatever else you're going to do, do it all at once. Replace an existing fence. I'm not sure that would be an RDA. 
But the vest is inside the wallet. But if it's there, and he's just replacing it. Oh, so I think I would have called that as like a minor project permit or something like Even that. Even with the excavation and the replanting of the posts and stuff like that? Yeah, for post excavation, minor project permit. For fence post excavation, minor project permit on an existing fence. Yeah, and it might just be posts stuck on the ground. Given the can area, just, can a fence be included as part of the site plan? I mean, the sure, why not? You can if have them put the exactly. fence up as part of the enforcement. You can tell yeah, them. Right. That's, that's what I'm saying. Like you want a fence. You want a barrier. Site plan. Right? You know? that, that if if that's you what you, you want to put a fence in. Take that one out. Put in a new fence. Yeah. The, the site plan that you're ta we're, we're talking about preparing with the planting can include uh, yes. a plan for replacement. Because it, would, it wouldn't, Just as nice as it probably. would be to have some nice plants there, which I would do, I, I almost, it, because I live there, I would think it would be for me and for my wife and I think it would be more appealing to see uh, a fence that isn't falling down behind these nice trees that are going to plant. So, so with this new fence, it's just the exact same type of fence? What's that? Just the same same fence replace? I, or are you thinking of different fence? I would probably put up like a, uh, I'd probably put up maybe a six foot fence. Not a, that's about three feet. I don't even know if it's three feet. It's pretty small. Stock in. Yeah. <laughs> Plant since he ran as a no. Okay. Yes. I mean, and so there's spacing in between the. Um, there, was there any? Leaf we talked about and squirrels. And yes, there was. There was. Yeah, there was. Being um, able to go through the fence. Yeah, stuff yeah, in the back, which is good. So, so we, the, there's the plant list online. Right. Need Sorry. the needed Sorry. plant list is online. If when you okay, yeah. document the plan. Yeah. Given the shade. Just some to think about, or the clethra, summer sweet clethras, dogwood shrubs, yeah. and to handle that because we also want them to be able to live and thrive, you know. So, just, just throwing that out there because you know, if, if you're putting one on the plan, but it's not the squirrels we worry about, they can get over anything, it's the woodchucks. <laughs> so, all right, so the, the plan is to what's the plan? Requesting a site plan with the uh, fence proposed fence if that's what that's what he wants to do with a replacement of uh, ten shrubs. Ten it so well, what, what's important to, what's important to keep in mind with the, the shrubs is it depends on the sizes. Just with show like, a planting plan. Yeah. Show a planting plan, show the fence and the we're also asking you to remove some of the was it uh, no, it wasn't Phil, it was uh, sticks, was it please Welcome the back to the ship? There was, there was yard waste back there. Yard yeah. waste. Yeah. Remove the yard waste. You're not going to remove the yard waste? No, I would love for him if you point it out to me. Okay. Because uh, what would cut the yard waste? Leaves, sticks, or leaves sticks, piles, sticks, stick piles. Okay. You know. There's sticks back there. There's big mm -hmm. trees back there. That yeah, and so... You could take that stuff to the dump. Okay. Every Monday, every Saturday, and and also there are sure times we can point out to where, where we saw. And right. there are times that you can put that stuff out in bags. There are three weeks during a trash day that they will take it. The town will take it, the leaves and stuff. Yeah. So it's pretty so easy. You're saying things that were dumped, lawn clippings, bag yeah, leaves, I, I guess, all yeah, clean up. That's what we're saying is not supposed to be dumped in the wetland. And if you're not sure where, where we're talking about, we can point out where. Right. Anything else? So is this, with this drawing, I can I can do this by hand with the map, print up a map and show you can, where. You, can, where, uh, you uh, can get a plot plan. You have a survey, correct? Right, no. So I had, yeah, I mean, I had one side of the survey, but he didn't hand me a, uh, I could probably get it printed. Yeah, if you ask yeah. for a PDF, you could print that. At least that's something scalable, right? You could just well, the the resource we have online that people can access would give them a good. Yeah. The map you had up earlier. Yeah, you, is can, that something you could like go you? to the town site and you could you could draw. I mean, you could get, you could go to the town site and download a plan of your property. Um, but I think the survey would be better if yeah, you had a survey to start with. Give a survey? 
of that? Um, I wasn't given one, but I imagine I could probably get it. Yeah. <laughs> if you pay for you it, pay for it, you should so. get it. Yeah, he didn't, and he didn't give me one. <laughs> so, yeah, I would just say that would be fine, right? Yeah. Yep. So just something that we can, you know, you see the boundaries, and it's not going to have the wetland on it, but we'll understand where the shed is, and then it'll probably show the fence, and then you can start building it back, like saying the fence is going to be a six-foot vinyl fence, and in front of it you're going to propose planting, and then whatever else you're proposing, if, if there is anything. Uh, if not, then, then that's what we need, and then just <coughs> some sort of um, narrative of you know what you're doing. So not just a picture, but something written down saying this is what I'm doing. And do you, can you make it to our next meeting on September 11th? And you think you can finish this up and uh, come in for September 11th? Can I have the fence up and it all with it by September 11th? No, 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 the, plan. no the, the plan. Get the plan, get the get the plan, plan first. Up so we can see it. That'd be great, though. <laughs> yeah, I don't see why not. It's three weeks away. About three weeks away. Okay. Good. Okay. So, if you have any questions, see you on September. Call Chuck. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Do you want to keep that? What's oh what? this here? Oh, you know. Like a copy of it for the Take file. That. You can have it. I have it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Good night. Good night. I had that perfect. I had that perfect. I said, "Let's." He'll. He's coming in, and he told me he was coming in. So. Hey, we don't have emergency permits or bills to approve. Do you have anything else on the agenda? You know, the I see evenly. I see there's no what added other things to each. Well, this is not the official. Yeah. But I think I have to move away by it. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor?